Welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show with naked truths and well-dressed lies. On Lee Mack's team tonight, a comedian from Devon who is truly the cream of the crop. Or should that be the jam of the crop? I never know which goes first. It's Josh Widdicombe. <laughs> and a star of Made in Chelsea, a show so posh it makes Downton Abbey look like EastEnders. It's Sophie Herman. <laughs> I'm David Mitchell's team tonight, a DJ and presenter who loves garage classics. My favourite garage classic is treating myself to a scratch card when I pay for my petrol. It's Gemma <laughs> Kearney. <laughs> and a man famous for his hammer. No, not the Norse god Thor. It's auctioneer <laughs> and four-room star Raj Bisram. Soldier Round One, Home Truths, where our panellists read out a statement from the card in front of them. To make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they have no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Josh, you're Ooh. first tonight. OK. Possession. Ah, right. First of all, yes. take the item out and pop it on the desk, then read out the card. This is my woolly hat. I can't wear it because whenever my ears get warm, I fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> David's team. Uh, uh, when... Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> How long does it take you to fall asleep when your ears get warm? Um, well, I'd say ten minutes. The problem you've done there now, Joss, is you've made it possible to demonstrate. <laughs> you, might, you might want to change that to four and a half days. OK. Do you want me to put the hat on for ten minutes? Yes. OK. And have you had many embarrassing situations with this as a Well, problem? I'm currently wearing it on primetime TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you, like, snoozed off? I have, yeah. I've moments. numerous... I've snoozed off probably three times. Will you describe the three times in reverse order of hilariousness? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the... <laughs> <laughs> OK, so all three times have been on trains. And uh, in reverse order of hilariousness, didn't miss my stop, didn't miss my stop, missed my stop. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the order right there. Yeah. <laughs> Gemma's got one that only covers one ear, so are, yeah. you, are you sleepy on the left-hand side? I am, yeah. <laughs> Don't judge me if I just... <laughs> Can I... Th genuinely, my ears are warming up and I'm feeling... <laughs> Can I take it off? You genuinely are feeling a bit drowsy. Presumably, sometimes you don't want to fall asleep, but wouldn't it also be quite useful if it's true, because... I do... I have done that, Rob. To get off, you stick it on. I can honestly tell you, Rob, that this has never helped me get off. <laughs> I don't think anyone would get off if you were there. No. <laughs> no. Oh, so oh. soon in the show, Sophie. <laughs> There's seven billion people on this planet. Some of them are into anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's reassuring. Thank you very much, yeah, David. Exactly, absolutely. But that's, you know... There's some weirdo out there that would be into me in a hat. <laughs> Do you know what, David? Since you got married, you've been very cocky. <laughs> <laughs> So, why were you wearing it on the train anyway? They're not perfectly run, our railways, but I don't <laughs> usually find that no, the, the I... temperature is arctic I'll in a railway carriage. I'll be honest with you, David. Don't, don't insult me with that phrase, because <laughs> we know the format is you may not be being honest, and, and I, I won't hold that against you. It's a parlour game. You know. okay, okay. You're not denying an affair. You know. um... <laughs> You're not denying it? <laughs> <laughs> Josh Whittacombe fails to deny affair. <laughs> This sounds crass, but I wore it on the train because I didn't want people to recognise me. <laughs> so you, you thought I, the way of detracting attention <laughs> is to put on an enormous bobble hat. <laughs> what are you thinking, Gemma? I don't think this is true. I think it's a lie. Yeah, it's got to be a lie. Who falls asleep by putting a hat on? Well, I think it might be true. Oh. But Ooh. I'm not going to overrule my team. Because Never. I'm, but I'm just going to... Just... You don't have the strength of character for that. I don't know. <laughs> OK, so they're saying it's a lie. Josh yeah. Widdicombe, truth or lie? David, it's true. Oh. Wow! Oh. Yes, it's true. Josh does fall asleep if his ears get warm. Uh, Raj, you're next. I used to practice skiing by strapping myself to the roof of a speeding car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, please, team. <laughs> Is this how you lost your hair? <laughs> <laughs> Might have something to do with it. Oh so, OK, when was this? <laughs> oh, back in the late 70s, early 80s. 
I was a skier. What, a what? professional a skier? Yes. Were you? Before what? you were an antique guy? Yes. What and you that? learned that on a car? No, it was part <laughs> of my training. We didn't have a lot of money, so we wanted to get used to going fast. Where was so this? we used to strap in Austria. In Austria? Right, because there are no mountains in Austria <laughs> where you can practice on. <laughs> Are you talking about a professional skill in events, or you mean you taught people to ski? No, I also uh, raced around Europe. I'll tell you what, if he's lying and he just added in I was a professional skier, he's risking it, isn't he? Yeah. Because yeah. we're going to ask him questions. And... Yeah. yeah. Who was the best downhill skier in the 80s? Franz Klammer. Not you! <laughs> <laughs> Franz Klammer. Oh, I will never know. So why wouldn't you use the mountains in Austria, then? Well, for two reasons. <laughs> <laughs> what are they? Um, <laughs> one is, I would have been a danger on the slopes. Mm -hmm. Are you not a danger when you're strapped to a car on a road? <laughs> no, we, were, we weren't on a road. Oh, wh where were you? Uh, a racetrack. Well, it's actually a trotting track. Mm. It's, it's, it's for horses that trot round the... And how did you learn to ride them? Did you put the horse on top of the car <laughs> and then get on top of the horse? <laughs> You were never on a public road, were you? No. There was never any situations where the driver forgot and thought, oh, I'll just pop into this underground car park for a minute. <laughs> 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 what was the second reason? You never got to that. We didn't have the money either. But you had the money for a car and the hiring of a racetrack. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have to hire the racetrack. The car was thrown in, as it were. It was a special car, cos it had to have a very long roof rack. <laughs> <laughs> What are you practising? The, the, the feeling of speed. So what, what sort of speeds are we talking about? Uh, we try to get to speeds between 60 and 80 miles an hour. No! no. <laughs> <laughs> and all that's holding you on is the boots attached to the skis? Yes. And what sort of pose now, then, are you doing? Could you show us the kind of... the kind of <laughs> position you would assume? <laughs> I'd start standing up and then I'd, I'd get down into this position with my... On the top of the car. Like How long is the journey? <laughs> <laughs> We just keep going round the track till, you know, we're tired. How are you telling the driver? Yes, <laughs> that's you're... a good point. Because you're on top of a car <laughs> yeah. going at 60 miles an hour. <laughs> and you're thinking, I'm knackered here, and so... What... Well, I've got poles and we had a system where you would just <laughs> bang the car. Oh, come, come on! <laughs> <laughs> One bang for stop, two bangs for a snack. <laughs> What are we thinking? Sophie, could he be it's telling a, the truth? It's a nine for me, it's a lie. I don't know what you learn. What's that training you used to do in a car? Because if you're, on a, if you're on a ski slope going, oh, no, oh, no, I'm 60 miles an hour, I think I'm going to crash into the tree. Oh, I know. I'll tap on the window. <laughs> oh, no, there is no window! <laughs> <laughs> Does it work? What are you training to do? <laughs> well, you know, just get used to the speed. <laughs> All right, what's your team going to say, Lee? It's a lie. Do you think it's a lie? Lie. We're going to go lie. You're saying it's a lie. Raj, was it true or were you telling a lie? I was, in fact, telling Whoa! the truth. Oh! No! <laughs> yes, it's true. Raj really did practice skiing on the roof of a car. Uh, Sophie, you're next. OK. Last year, at a charity dinner, I asked Prince William to fetch me a drink because I thought he was a waiter. David's team. <laughs> so, describe the scene. How many people are at this dinner? 30? Maybe okay. 40? OK. H had you ever seen Prince William before? I have, and I actually used to be such a big fan of him in the 90s when he still had hair. <laughs> Raj, I am so sorry. Well, okay. I, we, in, we invited her on the show, we yeah. had no idea. <laughs> so, what happened then? Talk us through the chain of events. Uh, we were at... Oh, what's this place called? Balmoral. What? What's this place called? You were, Balmoral. You were at Balmoral. Balmoral. We were mingling. I always get really hungry at these events and I'm yeah. just busy shoving my face into the canapes. And then I kind of... One got a little bit stuck in the wrong pipe. So I was half choking, basically. Okay. It was a terrible situation. So I just tapped on some shoulder and, I mean, it was... A balding man. How did he respond? He was like, oh, my God, here, are you OK? I was well, look, just let, so embarrassed. Let, let's reenact it. I'll be Prince William, of course, and <laughs> you be you. So you start having your little Should coughing I... fit. Yeah. I'm just stood here talking <coughs> to friends. <coughs> I mean, it's an absolutely wonderful event. It really is, isn't it? Yes, I mean, gosh, crikey, crikey, gosh. I think it's... Uh... You're doing Hugh Grant. <laughs> it's the closest I have okay. to Prince William. Right. right. I do it as Ronnie Corbett. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, I think that... <laughs> we're having a wonderful night. <laughs> Imagine Lee is Prince William. Let's I see. Can't. Lee right. will do this beautifully. Watch this. Watch this. <coughs> Are you Welsh? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you going to say, David? I tell you one of the, my issues with it. Go on. I have a few issues. Well, firstly, the location. Yeah. Balmoral. Balmoral. Yeah. Now that's. You I don't, don't often see royals there, do you? But, no, but I don't think they hold many charity events for fifty people there. I think that usually happens at other places where the royals sort of come in and are the honoured guests. What, what about Racing Raj? What do you well, think? Well, <laughs> I, I, I think she could have been there, but the fact is, for me, that she didn't recognise him. Just another bald guy. To <laughs> her. <laughs> no words, not mine. <laughs> so what's it going to be? What do you think? I think the location is the chink in the story, so I think maybe it's not true. May yeah. yeah. Not well, true. Not true. We're going to go not true. You're saying lie. Uh, yeah. OK, yeah. Sophie, yeah. at Balmoral, <sighs> truth or lie? It is, of course, a lie. No. <laughs> it's a lie. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. It's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Sean. <laughs> so, Raj, what is Sean to you? This is Sean. I used to whip his shirt off in public for money. <laughs> Raj's bare-chested buddy. Uh, Gemma, how do you know Sean? This is Sean, and at school he blew up my what's-its. All right, <laughs> Gemma's crisp combustor. And finally, David, what is your relationship with Sean? Uh, this is Sean. As a boy, I would only let him cut my hair if he was dressed as Zorro. <laughs> so there we have it. Raj's bare-chested buddy, Gemma's crisp combustor, or David's heroic hairdresser. Lee's team, where will you begin? OK, Raj, you used to rip his shirt off for money. Yep. When was this? Back in the early 80s. Well, let's just get straight to the point. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Why did you rip his shirt off for money? Well, I, I'm a bit of a keen amateur magician. Oh, hello. <laughs> Where did you learn this? On top of a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I also owned uh, a bistro, so it allowed oh, me... Oh, hello. Snow and water again. <laughs> what a life you've led. <laughs> and because I had the bistro, it allowed me to uh, indulge my passion of magic. So I used to hold um, magic evenings where we'd give them dinner and then I'd... You know, we do close-up magic and then we end up doing a little bit of a cabaret. So okay. what was the trick that involved you ripping off his shirt? Well, it was the, the finale to the, to the cabaret act. What was the finale? Ripping his shirt off. That's not a trick, that's assault. <laughs> <laughs> Talk us through it, Raj. We've come to your bistro and <laughs> we've had a super evening, the food is lovely. Yep. And then, oh, hang on, what's happening now? Yeah, I would uh, ask for a volunteer to come out. All right. And lots of people would put their hands up, but I would choose Sean. Oh, he was, so he was He was my stooge. So you're telling me that the regulars used to go, ah, <laughs> oh, fellas in again. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a terrible night. Wait till the end of the night and you see what happens. It gets worse. <laughs> Every week he falls for this, the poor fella. <laughs> I'm a viewer. Don't yeah. tell me how it's done. As a viewer, yeah. what would I have seen? You would have seen my volunteer come out yeah. And I would sit him down on a chair, I would tell him to relax, I would undo some buttons. And would you take it, like, from the collar and just go whoosh and it would come off? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Did it ever go wrong? Did you ever, like, take his nose off? <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a few incidents. What we, happened cause... when it went wrong? Well, he's the third stooge I've had. <laughs> 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 All right, who would you like to quiz next? Gemma? Gemma. OK. So he blew up your what's it? The little snack? Hmm. Was that a very strict school? Yeah, I was at school. He was my teacher and I was being naughty by eating in the back of the room, just being a bit of a troublemaker. How did he blow it up? Well, he was in the middle of doing an experiment and then he made an example of me by taking the packet, 
yeah. to the front of the room where this experiment was happening <laughs> and like sprayed it with a, like a dry oxygen or something, like some sort of steamy thing. The Bunsen burner was going and then they just like went poof. Just by heating them up? Yeah. They'd but like blow. it was something to do with what was sprayed, like this kind of... Yeah. Petrol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then everybody was laughing, and then he said, that's what will happen if you eat what's it's did it, did it stop you from eating in class? Did it have the desired effect? Um, it had the desired effect, and we got on a lot more after that as well. It broke the, it broke the ice. Yeah. Suddenly it was dead poet society. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what's his surname? Smith. Smith? Yeah. Oh. How did you just think of that like that? <laughs> Does Smith make what? No, it's Golden Wonder, isn't it? I think Golden Wonder sold Watsits, I think, to Walkers. I think it was a major corporate error because they were losing market share in their crisps, but they had this Watsits brand and then on some dark day they decided to sell that brand and then they were left with nothing. And that shows you the kind of error that can be made at a corporate level. <laughs> so we, we should be careful before we... We believe that these corporations are sort of magical and the private sector can do things. And before we <laughs> sell the NHS down the river, <laughs> remember the idiocy of Golden Wonder. <laughs> OK, now then, what about, um, what about David? Just remind us, David. As a boy, I would only let uh, Sean cut <laughs> my hair if he was dressed as Zorro. Doesn't he very worth his while? What was the kind of... How much were you paying him to dress as Zorro for this one hand? To be honest, I was a child. I didn't pay him. And this, is, this is the bit I doubt, that David was a child ever. <laughs> Did you go asking for, for Zorro? Was it just an optional thing he used to put on the board? <laughs> I, as Zorro, I, an extra £3. I, pound. Uh, <laughs> my, I think my parents requested Zorro. What? what? Why? Well, because <laughs> I was nervous about having a haircut. I think I was about five, something like that. And I... I think they'd had an a awkward experience with me freaking out at a previous hairdressing encounter. Yeah, it makes sense. So let's, let's, just, let's calm him down by get, getting someone to do it with a blindfold yeah. whilst <laughs> I'm holding a big, sharp knife. <laughs> let's remind ourselves, here, here's Zorro, have a look. Is that how he would dress up? Uh, as far as I remember, he had a black hat and a, a black mask. Oh, with... God, this show's taken a sort of... Let's help David turn, hasn't it? <laughs> so tell us what you look like. Well, here's a picture of him. <laughs> which he genuinely otherwise have thought I hadn't heard of Zorro. No, but you might have got it wrong. <laughs> well, because, yeah, you know, he wore the, the classic Zorro fireman's helmet <laughs> <laughs> and a stethoscope. So how, how old were you? Five, I think. Five have been six, I'm not sure. How old was he, approximately? How old was he? Don't look at him! <laughs> <laughs> You can't stop me looking at him. I think he was in his 20s. Right, so let's, let's be kind and say 21. <laughs> so, therefore, he's 15 years older than you at that time. Yeah. You're saying this man is 15 years older than you. <laughs> and how old are you? 47. You approximately the same age to me, <laughs> that man. OK. <laughs> Paint a picture for us. Young, young Master David is going to the high street to the barbers, unaware of the great fame and glory that lies ahead of him. For now, he's just a small boy. Yes. What happens? I can't, I can't remember the details, but broadly, I was very nervous about going to the hairdressers. I don't want to go in, Mummy. No, no. I, do. <laughs> I, don't I want to go home and write with my crayons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to write a satirical look back at the week that's just happened. <laughs> <laughs> Friends in playgroup are telling me I'm quite the wit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was probably unbearable. You're right. <laughs> uh, you know, I contemplate that every day. You say unbearable, I say adorable. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, I don't remember the details. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Sending you a heart. Oh, is that a heart? I thought that was saying, remember your kidneys. <laughs> <laughs> right, we need an answer. So, Lee's team, is Sean? Raj's bare-chested buddy, Gemma's crisp combustor, or David's heroic hairdresser. Uh, I, I'm struggling with David's here a little bit. Yes. Just... So Gemma's what's it? Mm. That, I, that's very believable. That's the kind of thing a kind of wacky science teacher would do to. Yeah. It is. It is a very believable. In science. And what's unbelievable is the idea that. <laughs> now, Raj... have you left the gas on? <laughs> <laughs> Raj, show us a trick. 
<laughs> if I could have half an hour yeah. and the use of the internet, I'm sure I could do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, but what did you think the question was? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, what do you think? I think he does look a lot like a science teacher. I think Gemma is telling the truth. So we're going to say, we're going to say Gemma? Yeah. Gemma? I'm saying it's Gemma. OK, right. So, Sean, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Sean. And Raj used to oh, whip my on. shirt off for money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sean is Raj's bare chested buddy. And we can now see the trick. So, uh, you're going to need to wear masks for this, please. Uh, Sean, if you. Zorro masks! <laughs> take... <laughs> you take a position there in the chair. And then uh, o o over to you, Raj. Oh, God. Well, well, I would simply get Sean out as my stooge. We'd act as if we didn't know each other. I'd say, good evening, how are you? And I would, uh, <laughs> I would undo his uh, wrist button and then I would undo this button. And then, as you can see, I'd undo this button. And then all I'd say is, on the count of three, we'd say some magic words. And tonight, they are, would I lie to you? So on the count of three, one, two, three. Would I lie to you? you? What's happened? I've nearly killed him. I've just got pictures of him 30 years ago, just coming in every week going, can you please do it? Like it was the second poll. <laughs> you decided to go again was the coolest bit. Why did you oh, keep going? Can... Oh. Thank God you didn't cut him off. Is Sean all right? Yeah, who cares? <laughs> He's fine. I love the idea that he had to put masks on for safety reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then almost took his head off. Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies, and we start with... <coughs> it's Lee. I was pecked in the eye twice while closely inspecting a cuckoo clock at precisely 2pm. <laughs> <laughs> David's team. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen worse injuries tonight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where was this cuckoo clock? It was, it was on my wall. Why were you inspecting it? Because it wasn't working properly. Oh, it sounds like it was. <laughs> so it turns out. When did this happen? It happened at 2 o'clock. Are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> You're at home. You're relaxing at, at Mac Acres. Yeah. And well, you... it was in the 90s. Oh. Mac bed sits. Right. <laughs> yeah. What's a bed sit? A, what's a bed sit? Yeah. A bed what's sit a is bed... like this a very small flat. It's probably where your staff live. <laughs> if you knew at two o'clock it was going to come out, yeah. does that seem a little bit strange no, to be getting because, very close to it? No, because it was coming out at, at, well, at midday, it was coming out at five past twelve, <laughs> and at one o'clock it came out at five past And I kept tinkering with the bits inside. <laughs> And I thought, it's going to happen again, this, isn't it? Because I haven't fixed it. And I went in close, thinking, this time, when it strikes two, I'm going to listen to the noise it makes inside, because it's not going to come out, is it? Bang! Right in the eye. Bang! Right in the eye. <laughs> so, okay. essentially, you were a victim of your own clock-mending success. Absolutely. <laughs> you did enough fiddling to produce a result. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what do you think, David? Um, what, what do you think? Cobblers. <laughs> Rubbish. What are you going to say? Uh, uh, I think we're going to say a lie. You're going to say it's a lie. Yeah, OK, so. Lee, uh, the truth or lie? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's Josh. Ooh. 
Even though we use the same brand, I insist my wife and I have separate tubes of toothpaste because the way she squeezes hers is just plain wrong. <laughs> David's right. Tooth. I can believe that. To be honest, it happens with us as well. Oh. We've got separate toothpaste tubes, so... What does your wife do, then? I always squeeze, squeeze mine up from the bottom, yeah. but she'll just squeeze it randomly. Oh, Is that no. like you, Josh? I'd imagine when no, you squeeze your tube, the whole blooming head comes off. <laughs> <laughs> so I do mine traditionally from the from the top. Right. From the top. That's yeah, not from... traditional. That's not traditional. Well, no, 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 no. The toothpaste comes out the top. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, that yeah. is traditional. <laughs> that is traditional. I mean, Do you know what, David? Very... Thank you very much, yeah. because I've been having this argument for six or seven years. Well, she did <laughs> cut a hole in the side. No, not at the side. So she cuts the bottom corner off, you know? No, like... she does. No, no she what? does. Like, you know with a 99, when you uh, bite the bottom of the... Yes. Because she doesn't like the way the top clags up with toothpaste. Ah. Oh. So about halfway through, she'll cut the bottom corner off and go from the bottom to get a new kind of exit. Yeah, so she'll initially make some use of the top nozzle... Until it starts to get claggy. And, and then she cuts it a little rectum. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gosh, it okay. seems to me a very simple solution. You have your own tubes each. Yeah, they do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> that's why we're being invited to believe you know or what? disbelieve. <laughs> this very reassuring because <laughs> yeah. you've all backed up my approach I, and you've I, totally I, backed I, up the way I'm living my life. I think I believe it. I just want to know when you found this out. It was probably when we moved in together. And, and then, to be and honest, I didn't have an issue with it. I thought initially, this is fine, it's quirky. Oh, it's something I love about yeah. her. And then it started to annoy me. <laughs> well, that's, it. that's about everything in life. <laughs> So what do we think? Is he is he telling the truth? I think he's telling the truth. I think so too. I can just imagine him like having quite an independent wife, you know. Just yeah, she'd have to be, wouldn't she? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it sounds true. My first instinct was true, so yeah. Okay. Stick with it. Uh, well, I think that if Josh had been given that card just now, he wouldn't have invented the idea of snipping the bottom corner off the toothpaste tube. That's what makes me think he's telling well, what the truth. what would he have invented? What, what you're saying, David, is yeah. that I don't have the mental capacity <laughs> to come up with that idea. <laughs> truth is, Josh, I'm not saying it's impossible. With a following wind, on a good day, maybe. <laughs> What I'm saying is I think it's more likely that it's just something that your wife actually does. All right, um, we're know. saying it's true. Yeah. Josh Widdicombe, truth or lie? It's a lie. No! <laughs> oh! Very good. That noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show. And I can reveal that David's team have won by four points well, to two. Well, well, well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night. Right, are we doing it again? Yeah? Yeah, OK. On the count of three, we're going to have the magic words. One, two, three. What about you? <laughs>